ad hominem fallacy, is when you're arguing about space exploration, and instead of addressing the points, you say, that's rich coming from someone who thought Pluto was a Disney character, because obviously cartoon knowledge disqualifies you from astronomical debates. Strawman fallacy is when you're debating the benefits of a vegetarian diet, and instead of addressing the actual arguments, you say, my opponent thinks everyone should eat grass like cows, because, obviously, advocating for more greens means turning humanity into a herd. Appeal to ignorance fallacy is when you claim your dog can speak French because nobody has ever proven he can't. After all, he's just too sophisticated to converse in front of skeptics. False dilemma fallacy is when debating snack options and someone insists it's either eat this entire cake or admit you hate dessert, as if there's no concept of enjoying a single slice or, heaven forbid, a different type of sweet. Slippery slope fallacy is when someone says adopting one cat will lead to living in a house so full of felines, you'll have to ask permission from the head cat to use your own bathroom, because obviously pet adoption is the first step to unwittingly becoming a cat overlord. Circular reasoning fallacy is when you argue that you're the best singer in the shower because the echo tells you so. It's like giving yourself a Grammy based on the applause from your shampoo bottles, convinced of your vocal talent because obviously, if the soap suds are impressed, who's to argue? Hasty generalization fallacy is when you see one person slip on a banana peel and conclude that bananas are the leading cause of public injuries, preparing to launch a global campaign. Ban the peel save the world. Because clearly one slippery moment is enough to peel back the layers of a worldwide conspiracy. Red herring fallacy is when you're arguing about whether to watch a horror movie or a comedy and your friend says, but consider this, is a hot dog a sandwich? It's like suddenly being teleported to a philosophical debate on snack taxonomy while you're just trying to pick a movie. Because obviously the true path to cinematic consensus lies through the mystical realm of Delhi definitions. Appeal to authority fallacy is when you're trying to prove that the earth is flat because a famous basketball player said so. It's like using your dentist's opinion on astrophysics to argue about black holes because obviously, if they can navigate the mysteries of your molars, the cosmos is no big leap. Bandwagon fallacy the belief that an argument is valid because a majority of people believe it. It's like deciding that jumping off a bridge is a great idea because all your friends are doing it. After all, if everyone agrees to wear socks on their hands, it must be the height of fashion, right? Appeal to tradition fallacy is when you insist on sending messages via carrier pigeon because emails just don't have that personal touch. It's as if hitting send on a bird is the ultimate proof of effort in communication because nothing says I care like a note tied to a pigeon's leg, navigating the perils of modern air traffic. Post hoc ergo propter, hoc fallacy, is when you notice it rains every time you wash your car, so you start believing your car washing ritual summons the rain gods. It's as if your sponge and bucket are the magical instruments controlling the weather, making you the unofficial rainmaker of the neighborhood. Because, clearly, meteorology takes a backseat to your driveway activities, non sequitur fallacy is like saying, I didn't have coffee this morning, so I must be a dolphin. It's the conversational equivalent of jumping from a discussion about breakfast straight into declaring your new identity as a marine mammal, because obviously, the lack of caffeine grants you fines and a penchant for the ocean. False cause fallacy. Is when you notice that every time you wear your lucky socks, your favorite sports team wins. So, you conclude that your sock choice is the secret sauce to their victory making Laundry Day the most strategic event of the sports season. Because obviously the fate of the team hinges not on practice or skill, but on the mystical power of your foot apparel. Appeal to emotion fallacy is when you're debating who gets the last slice of pizza and your friend tears up reminiscing about how they once gave you the bigger half of a cookie in third grade. After all we've been through, how can you eat that slice without thinking of our friendship? Suddenly, a childhood cookie-sharing moment becomes the emotional linchpin for pizza distribution. Because clearly, the path to pizza justice is paved with the tears of past generosity. Loaded question fallacy is when you ask your roommate, So, how long have you been secretly believing that aliens control the weather? It's a no-win situation. Deny it, and you're just hiding your truth. Admit it, and you're the in-house conspiracy theorist.
It's like being put on trial by a question where your only defense is a tinfoil hat. Guilt by association fallacy is when you reject the idea of installing solar panels just because your grumpy, disagreeable neighbor has them. It's like saying, if that curmudgeon next door likes solar energy, it must be part of some nefarious plot to steal sunlight. Because obviously the best way to judge renewable energy is by the personality of people who use it, not its environmental benefits. Cherry-picking fallacy is when you argue that your cat is the smartest creature on earth because it managed to open a slightly ajar cupboard once while ignoring all the times it ran into a closed glass door. It's like presenting a case for feline genius at a science conference based on selective memory, conveniently forgetting the less brilliant moments. Because clearly, one act of cupboard espionage outweighs a lifetime of glass door confusion. False equivalence fallacy. Is when you claim that eating a whole cake is the same as running a marathon because either way you're sweating and out of breath by the end. It's as if finishing the last slice grants you the same bragging rights as crossing the finish line complete with the urge to slap a 26.2 sticker on your fridge right next to the cake stand. Because, obviously, the path to athletic glory is paved with frosting and sprinkles. Ambiguity fallacy is like when you ask your friend if they liked the meal you cooked and they reply, Well, it was definitely something I've never tasted before. It's the culinary equivalent of a diplomatic tightrope walk, where they've managed to say absolutely nothing while technically giving you a response. Because, obviously, the most important feedback about your cooking skills lies in the realm of uncharted taste experiences. The fallacy of composition is like assuming that just because one piece of a jigsaw puzzle is sky blue, the entire puzzle must depict a clear, sunny sky. It's as if finding that one blue piece convinces you that you're putting together an image of the Caribbean Sea only to discover it's actually a portrait of a blueberry muffin, because clearly, every blue piece leads to a tropical paradise, not breakfast. The fallacy of division is like assuming that because a basketball team is championship winning, every player on the team must be a superstar athlete. It's as if believing the team's trophy somehow grants each player the ability to leap tall buildings in a single bound, shoot three-pointers with their eyes closed, and dunk from half court. Because obviously being part of a winning team means you can single-handedly take on any opponent, even on days when tying your own shoelaces feels like a challenge. Equivocation, fallacy, is like when someone says, I read that nothing is better than complete happiness, but a ham sandwich is better than nothing. Therefore, a ham sandwich is better than complete happiness. It's the linguistic equivalent of a magic trick, where words shift meanings mid-act, turning a philosophical musing into an absurd culinary hierarchy. Because obviously, the secret to eternal joy was sandwiched between slices of bread all along. Appeal to pity fallacy is when you're late handing in an assignment and tell your teacher, my neighbor's cat was feeling lonely and needed someone to talk to about its fear of vacuum cleaners. It's as if the emotional well-being of a feline acquaintance should reasonably extend the deadline. Because, clearly, the key to academic leniency lies in the paws of a neighbor's anxious pet. Appeal to wealth fallacy is when someone argues that a car must be superior because it costs more than the average house? Sure, it only gets three miles to the gallon and requires a team of mechanics on standby. But have you seen the price tag? That's quality. It's as if the road to automotive excellence is paved with dollar bills, and the best way to measure a car's performance is by how quickly it empties your bank account. Because obviously, the more you pay, the faster you go. Right into bankruptcy. Appeal to Poverty Fallacy is when someone argues that a meal must taste better because it was made with ingredients from a discount grocery store. It's not just soup, it's a broth of humble origins and economic savvy, they'll proclaim, as if the thriftiness of the shopping trip adds an extra dash of flavor to the pot. Because obviously the path to culinary greatness is paved not with expensive spices, but with savings and a keen eye for bargains. Wishful thinking fallacy is when you're convinced your dog is a secret superhero because he barks every time the doorbell rings. He's not just barking, he's signaling he's ready to save the world, one mailman at a time. It's as if his canine intuition is less about territory and more about donning a cape and fighting crime. 
fueled by the belief that every wag of his tail is a step towards peace and justice. Because, clearly, every superhero story starts with a vigilant pooch and an unsuspecting postal worker. Argument from silence fallacy is like assuming your cat agrees to a bath because it didn't meow when you suggested it. Your silence is consent, Mr. Whiskers. As if a moment of feline silence is anything but the calm before the stormy bath time rebellion. Because clearly, in the world of pet negotiations, no meow means, yes, please soak me in water, burden of proof. Fallacy is when you claim your pet rock is telepathic and challenge your friends to prove it isn't. It hasn't disagreed with me yet, you argue, as if its stony silence is proof of mind-reading abilities. Because obviously, the only thing more convincing than a talking pet is one that communicates through the power of sheer inactivity. Moving the goalposts fallacy is like challenging someone to a race, and when they're about to cross the finish line first, you shout, wait, it's actually a three-legged race. Suddenly the criteria change, and their impending victory is snatched away because they weren't psychic enough to guess the real rules. It's the equivalent of playing a game where the rules are made up on the spot and the points don't matter, except for the fact that you've decided you're always winning. No true Scotsman fallacy is like claiming no true coffee lover likes their brew with sugar. And when you encounter a coffee connoisseur with a sweet tooth, you scoff. Well, any real coffee enthusiast drinks it black. It's the culinary equivalent of a secret handshake that keeps changing ensuring the coffee club remains as exclusive as a speakeasy with an ever-shifting entrance. Texas Sharpshooter Fallacy is like accidentally baking a cookie that slightly resembles a celebrity, then claiming you run a bakery specializing in celebrity look-alike pastries. It's a niche market, you boast, as if every misshapen dough blob was a deliberate attempt at artisan craftsmanship, because clearly, Culinary fame is just one oddly shaped cookie away. Gambler's fallacy is like watching a popcorn maker and thinking, this one's popped three times in a row, so the next kernel is definitely going to stay a kernel. It's as if the popcorn machine is playing a cosmic game of chance and you're betting on the underdog kernel that refuses to pop because surely popcorn popping operates on a strict turn-taking policy. The naturalistic fallacy is like arguing that sleeping on a bed of nails must be beneficial because it's more natural than a mattress. Why embrace comfort when you can live like a hedgehog? It turns the quest for a good night's sleep into an extreme survival challenge, because obviously, the closer you are to feeling like a porcupine, the healthier you must be. The moralistic fallacy is like declaring that calories shouldn't count on weekends, so they magically don't. Eat that third slice of cake, you proclaim. In the land of should be, it's zero calories. It's as if the laws of metabolism take a break on Saturdays and Sundays, bowing to the higher law of dessert desires, because clearly the universe aligns with our wishes, especially when it comes to guilt-free snacking.